It was 1968 when this very cute guy was born in a city of Košice in Slovakia. So he was one of two sons and that was pretty, let's call it average family, so middle class family. And his parents actually divorced very young, when he was very young. So he ended up taking care of his mother and grandmother with his brother, with whom he, let's just say, wasn't very close. As a kid, he was completely healthy, so no injuries, not, not a single problem, and he even passed kindergarten without any complications, right? Actually, he was so good that he enrolled in some kind of school for math gifted people. He wasn't very popular at school, but on the other side, he wasn't bullied as well. And he was a kind of loner and preferred, let's call it, solo activities. Something like uh, driving a bike, playing uh, guitar and something with computers, programming. Now, what was the actual problem with this kid? He was uh, very healthy, he was active, he was not bullied, he was, you know, like, calm and quiet kid, so... What's the issue, man? Where, where's the hold up? It turns out that being lonely is, well, not so good. He was fighting with teachers very frequently and he actually stabbed his 11-year-old neighbor when he was 13, so... Yeah, not good. And quite normally, he ended up in some kind of uh, psychiatric hospital. So, let's just say he spent some time there. Now, fast forward a few years, he was uh, drafted in the army as some kind of technical specialist. And of course, he finished all the tests without any problems. Now, along the way, he found new interests, such as uh, martial arts and firearms, which, considering his very unstable little head was, well, not a good combination, so to say. But what he didn't find interest in were females. And only at about 30 he found a partner and had two children. Dear God, poor, poor children. Alright, enough with the background. Let's get into the nasty stuff. Now, as we said, he was pretty much a loner and he actually exploited many, many signs of psychopathy. For example, emotional coldness, inability to express feelings and lack of empathy, and so on and so on. Now, what was the next step for this lonely, poor little guy? Dark web, baby. I'm just kidding, I'm not sure that dark web is in question, but some kind of a forum when Let's just say very, very sick people gather to hang out. Now, at that particular time, he started having some very disturbing urges about uh, you know what. So, in 2009, he created a profile which uh, was under the name Orion218. And he was looking for people who basically wanted to be, you know, oft and eaten. Now, since we said that this was very, very sick forum, those kind of people actually existed. And two of those people were Elena Gudiakova and Lucia Uhnarova. Basically, those people were very depressed and with some <laughs> serious mental health issues, obviously. Those kind of people were absolutely perfect for his sick urges and he was targeting and looking only for that kind because he knew that it wouldn't basically take too much to convince them to do well something that was disgusting now the problem was that i tried to find some some kind of information on these two individuals but basically i didn't have any luck However, what I did find is some kind of chat or email exchange between Churko and Lucia. And I assure you the next part that uh, I'm going to read is probably going to be the most disturbing part of your day. So, enjoy. So, we have email or chat exchange. And basically, Lucia was, let's just say, arranging her trip to Belize. If you know what I mean. And I highly doubt that you don't. So... What I'm gonna do next is actually read this chat 
or whatever it is that I found online on some kind of uh, Slovakian uh, website or something. Uh, and I have to put some kind of disclaimer because <laughs> it is really, really unsettling. But basically, we don't want to alert uh, Susan and the algorithm with all the red flag words, so to say. However, I will put some creepy, eerie music in the background to adjust the atmosphere for you guys. So you can see how beautiful <laughs> this conversation actually was. So I hope you are ready for this. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Three, two, one. Let's go. If you want to off yourself so badly, I can help you. Write the details, write the details. So you, we can see that she said it twice, so she was obviously very, very excited. I hope you don't betray me. You would come to me, we would go deeper into the forest, I'd give you a hypnogen, whatever that meant, and when you fell asleep, I'd suffocate you. Seeing death up close has always appealed to me. Then I'd bury you, so there'd be no evidence. I would love that, but I don't believe you'd actually do something like that. I once agreed with a guy that we were going to K each other, and he actually called the cops. So at this point it was August uh, 31st, 2010 and Lucia calls Churko again. So are you still interested? That sounds... <laughs> that sounds beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck man. It doesn't just sound beautiful. It is a certainty for me. I'll do it if you want. I don't care who you are, what gender you are. I don't want to violate you. I'm just a freak excited by death. I want to feel her, touch her dying body. I'm not sure if I'm reading a poem or something, but <laughs> this is like very disturbing, both in what they're planning to do and in what kind of way they're expressing, man. It just, it just feels weird. I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. I'm afraid I'd suffer something other than our agreement. There will be no intercourse either before or after, no mutilation either, I'm not a sadist, I just want death, that is why I prefer suffocation, it involves direct contact. So now Lucia asks, and how is that going? The way I describe it, you eat the medicine, in about 20 minutes you fall unconscious, I will choke you for about 5 minutes until I can no longer feel a pulse. I'll pierce the heart, just to be sure, so I don't bury alive. I mean, I don't bury you alive, I'm supposed to say. Good, he's a very, very caring guy, so he cares about his victims. That's uh, always uh, good to hear, right? And how many did you K? Did it satisfy you? I won't tell you the name or the number. Only when we're together and you have the last 20 minutes left to live. I guarantee you pain-free. So, don't worry, you won't be the first, it's tried and tested. I don't want to wake up in the hospital, I'd rather hang myself by my own hair. <laughs> and how are you going to strangle me? Now, he's a, obviously a gentleman, so he said, I'm not strangling, I cover my nose and mouth, I like it better. And so, I cover your nose and mouth, is supposed to say, right? Uh, and believe me, no one has woken up so far. I'm not interested in K conscious people. I hate crying, screaming, fear. So at this point it was September 1st and Lucia continued. You have a good idea. God, let it work out. I hope you are not my savior. And how can I prove to you that I'm your killer and not your savior? Am I supposed to <laughs> Am I supposed to send you a picture of the woman I stabbed as proof that I'm a murderer? And she said, send, I'm curious. So she obviously receives the photo at this point and she answers. I already looked at a photo, it's just small wounds. I thought they would be massacred. The result will be wonderful. I go to sleep. Good night. And truly good night it was. Because in the morning they contacted each other one more time and 
That was the last time anybody heard and saw Lucia alive. Now, his MO was basically always the same. He would meet up with a person in the forest, in designated spot. Uh, he would proceed to, you know, off them. And then he would, you know, take out his little cleaver and butcher the victim into pieces. Then he would use the meat he wanted to, you know, cook and eat. Uh, the rest he would, like, spray spray the pepper all over it so he would like cover the the, the sense the, the smell so the wild animals and the other people that would the they that would cross in that kind of area wouldn't notice uh, then he would you know eat the the, the chosen parts uh, the rest he would pack in the bags and put it in his home in the freezer and the remains he would just bury it there or on some other spot yeah, that sounds like a pretty normal day. In his mind, of course. <laughs> Let's go to the third chapter. In the spring of 2011, uh, a man from Switzerland called Markus Dubach was considering the same thing as Elena and Lucia. He was depressed, he was miserable, he was bullied at work and I don't know, somehow he he thought that uh, somebody eating him would be like a perfect answer and solution to his problem. So I really don't know what the fuck is wrong with these people, man. I mean, what kind of thinking? <laughs> is going on in their little heads. I would genuinely like to know. Anyway, he posted an ad on a cannibal forum and guess who replied? Now, an important thing to mention here is that he later said that this was initially some kind of a very sick joke by his side. So he didn't actually want it to do this, but he was very, very curious. So he kept contact with uh, Churko to see what would eventually happen. So soon after that, he sent him an image of his uh, legs and and his ass. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. I, I tried not to laugh, but <laughs> he's stronger than me. I, I I can't help it, man. I'm I'm either a very sick person or this is just I don't know. It's <laughs> he sent him a picture of his ass, man. <sighs> okay, uh, get it together, man. Let's get serious. Now, when Churko returned the favor and sent like an image of human body being cooked in a pan, then this guy said, all right, man, I'm, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out, man. So he quickly drops the idea of being cooked and eaten and he contacts the Swiss authorities. They quickly transfer the case to Slovak colleagues. Now, the special task was formed and the plan was developing on how to capture this miserable sick prick. And one of those agents volunteered in pretending to be uh, Markus Dubach. And basically they set up a meeting with Churko. So the meeting spot was actually Churko's little secret place in a forest. And tactical team was organized in some kind of circle around the meeting point right and they had like support of a sniper who was hidden i don't know in some kind of trees or at higher point so he had like churko on the scope the whole time so churko arrives at a designated spot so the meeting spot and actually uh the undercover agent was very surprised uh how churko was dressed i don't know what he expected some kind of command or something but he was surprised that he just looked like a casual tourist right and after churko officially you know like uh, acknowledged that he was a cannibal uh the undercover agent ordered him to ordered him to stand down and at that particular time churko knew that this wasn't <laughs> his guy and he pulls a gun so the sniper that was in the trees on a high point like sees that it was a danger for his colleague and he fires a few shots from the sniper hitting Churko in the neck and I think in the shoulder as well. However, as he falls down, he, Churko manages to 
shoot one time at a police officer and hits him one time in the chest. Luckily, undercover agent managed to survive after the hospital intervention and the other guy, this scumbag, was, well, dead. Now, Churko had a backpack when he came to the, to the location, so the first thing, they examined the backpack and found all the necessary material, all the necessary equi equipment that is needed for you know, when you want to off somebody and you want to perform some very, very disturbing and sickening and disgusting acts on their bodies. After that, they went to his house and like searched the whole house and whole property. And they managed to find uh, the human remains both from Elena and Lucia. They also managed to find some of their uh, <sighs> remained meat in his fridge so i guess he was planning to just continue doing that they also searched his computer and got uh, gps coordinates of the exact same spot in the forest when where the meeting was and it turned out that just a few feet away from that uh it was some, some kind of uh, shallow graves or something so he was burying his victims both in his backyard and on that spot in the forest i don't know what's up with these kind of people they just had to have bodies in their backyards and that's it now what is even more disturbing is that a bunch of italian investigators managed to connect the profiles of 28 more women from 2009 to 2011 with churko so they were the exact same type depressed lonely they wanted to commit suicide and at that point they were all thinking is it possible that this guy was like responsible for many many more deaths is he guilty is he in some kind of way involved and fortunately nobody to this day knows the answer but i will just say it is very much possible well i guess that's a wrap on today's case and this was very very different from what i uh, usually did so far on this channel i have a special place reserved on for this kind of people on my second channel but i just wanted to you know give some darkness to a casual detective because he's too relaxed he jokes a lot and he needs to be stressed from time to time with a sickening cases like this one so please tell me what you think should i continue giving you some juicy and disgusting uh, cases <laughs> like this uh, in the mix or should i just move on with the same as always but anyway thanks for watching take care don't forget to be good otherwise i will be forced to arrest you like always see you in the new one